Okay, what is up guys? My name is Fat Ninja Turtle, and today I'm going to be showing you um, a nice little breakdown type of thing on my motion track that I did in the bitch edit. And uh, first of all, I just want to say this is my new Alienware. And the reason why it is like this right now is because when I play my external monitor, or I use my external monitor, sorry, it goes like this, and I don't want to move everything because then when I go back on my laptop, just the screen on the laptop, um, everything's messed up and the configuration is weird, so I just leave it. So um, I'm going to be doing a breakdown on this motion track in particular and uh, yeah it's pretty sweet I used some really cool effects incorporated into it so let's just get started okay so first of all you want to go into After Effects and you want to have a motion track so this is just an S of motion track type of thing and what you want to do if you have CXS, uh, CXS sorry did I say that properly? CS6. Yeah, okay. It is CXS, not CS5.5. But if you have CXS, you can just go here, right click, and you can go track camera. So I'm just going to do that quickly. And what it does, it analyzes all the features on the map. It just like takes little pinpoints and then it um it tracks them practically. So I'm just gonna let it do that and I will come back once it is done tracking it. Okay guys, I am back. So now here it is, it just has nice little pinpoints, and if you zoom through it. I scroll through the timeline there's different pinpoints in different locations so I am going to grab one kind of the center of this deck here so what you want to do well this is what I like to do but you can do whatever you want depending on what type of text you use but I use element so what I do with element I just right click I do create null and camera so the camera is what actually tracks everything and then the null is just helps you out so I'm gonna hit s on my null I'm gonna put it up to about 2000 so then you can see it perfectly and that it just kind of helps you with your motion track. Like it doesn't do anything. It's not there when you render. It just helps you in the meantime. So I'm just going to S to S to get rid of that. Okay. So what I want to do, if you guys have Element 3D, is which uh, what I use, but I'll leave uh, links on how to get it in the description on Mac and PC. But what, what you want to do is go Control uh, Y, which is New Solid, and I'm just going to call this Element Layer. Okay. And then you want to go Effects and Presets and type in Element. Drag it on, should load up, load up, and then you want to make it text. So you'll, to do to do a text, you got to hold Control T, and then you have your text tool. And I'm just gonna just type in. Um, I'll type in the same thing. So bitch, and then I'll make a new text layer. Um, actually no, I'm gonna do that afterwards. So I'm just gonna do the bitch one for now. So turn that off, and just I'm just gonna delete this one. Oopsie. Then turn that off. Go to Element go to custom layers custom text and map path layer one click bitch or whatever your text says and then you go to scene setup what you want to do is click extrude so now you have your nice little treaty text and I said treaty just cuz I like to make fun of French people anyways then you go to bevels and you want to hold the bold well no this is what I use you don't you can do whatever you want but this is what I like to use hold bold and drag it on there and now you have a nice bold text with red and black and you can change the settings which I'm not going to do right now but all you got to do to change the settings is click on this one so you want this more shiny go down and go to reflection or like refraction and stuff like that and you can change it around so what I do when I'm motion tracking which helps me a lot is first of all let the text load oh what happened to the text okay one second here it should have this oh whoopsies I duplicated the model somehow. I'm just gonna delete this quickly. Delete. Okay, yeah, so there we go. Now it's gonna work. Load up please. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Okay, so what I like to do is go camera track or the on the um, the null object, go P for position, then go back onto your element layer. I'm gonna hit group one, particle replicator, then I'm gonna like kinda like do the same type of positions. But then I'll play around with it. But like, cause the the null is like where you, your camera is situated. So if you put it in the same position as the null, um, you'll see it for like throughout the throughout most of the motion track, until like you go over the boat, of course. So I'm just gonna put it in the same type of positions. Uh, eight, three, four. Okay. So now it, as you can tell, it's motion track right next to the null, the null, sorry, but it's a little small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to particle look size I'm going to put it about to 25 so now it's a lot bigger I'm actually just going to bring that down to 20 it's too big for me then I'm going to bring this up um, so it's in the same like same Z dimension 
as the null, which is the most important part, and then I can bring it to the side a bit. And now I can play rotation stuff if I want to, which I don't though. Okay, so that's the that's the basics for the the uh, first text, and now I'm gonna go over the second one. So I'm just gonna hit P. Actually, no, I'm gonna keep that there for now. No, I'm gonna hit P. Okay, um, now you wanna go back to your text tool, and I had a B flying out of this B, so I'm just gonna type in B, and that's it for that layer. I'm gonna turn it off because you don't wanna see a B on the screen randomly. Then I'm gonna go to custom layers once again, uh, custom layers, and I'm gonna hit the B. Okay, now you wanna go back to scene setup. Okay, this part is a little tricky. You want to right click on this extrusion model. You want to duplicate model, then click on the top one, go to custom path 2, and then click on that group. You got to have that one off. So it's got to be on second group because you can only have a maximum of five groups at a time. Okay, so now I'm just going to let it load up. Okay, it's done. You can't see it because it's at the very beginning, but I'm just going to put the B in the same position as the bitch. Which sounds pretty funny. Oh, what did I just do there? Okay, one second. Oh, uh, I don't even know what I did. Uh, did I do that properly? One second, guys. I missed. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go to group two, uh, particle replicator, and I'm just going to do the exact same, the exact same um, dimension. So I'm going to go two one eight four two six. I feel like I'm like put a phone phone number in or something. Okay, so there we go. So now it's in the same dimensions, but you can tell that it's not centered because the the bitch is a five letter word and this is just one. So I'm just gonna drag it over. I'm gonna drag it up first. Now I'm gonna drag it to the side. And obviously the bitch is a lot bigger. A lot smaller, sorry. So I'm just gonna go particle look and I'm gonna bring it down until it is at a suitable suitable um size so that looks pretty I think yeah that's basically right in there so I'm just gonna leave that for now and then I'm just gonna go one second I'm just gonna rid all of these key mark or whatever just put them in the beginning now I'm gonna put a mark right here because that's when I want my keyframe to start for the B to fly out to match with the Y which I will do right now actually so then you wanna go to T the text tool just type in Y, leave it, and then turn it off, of course. Element, uh, I'm going to get rid of group 1 because I don't need it anymore. Then go back to custom layers once again, hit the Y, and then go to scene setup. It's really repetitive, guys, but once you get the hang of it, it works pretty well. So you just got to duplicate the model, and then go to path 3, and then turn group 2 off and put 3. So now it's on group 3. So now I want to go to group 3 particle look and I'm gonna bring this down so the Z position I'm gonna put it about the same and then I can play it afterwards just so I can see it right now okay now I'm gonna bring it to the side of it I'm gonna go down to rotation on the group 3 and I'm gonna play with this a lot so I'm gonna have it like this you can really do whatever you want I'm just gonna do what I did before by having it on the deck one second how do I even oh god it's so hard Okay, here we go. And now let's flip this over completely. Okay, I don't even know how to flip it over. Um, there we go. And there we go. And then we bring it down. So yeah, there we go. Okay, so now it looks like it's motion tracked on the deck, which it is. It's like right next to the null, so that's a good spot to put it. So now when I'm going to put the one there, like the, what is that called? Marker or whatever. So I'm going to put a one there, and then I'm going to go over here. Maybe here, that seems like a good point. Then I'm going to go shift two, and yeah. So now go back, to, you hit one on your keyboard, and it automatically goes here. Now on group three, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to X, all these, I'm going to keyframe all the rotation values end position and mm, end the Z position yeah okay then when I go so I can just uh, minimize that for now then when I go to actually for first of all you want to make um your Y a bit smaller because you want it to match it up so I'm gonna make it a bit bigger than 5.71 because Y is a big uh, it's kinda like a small letter I find 
So I'm just going to put it to like 7.7. .7. Seems good. Okay, then on the, the B, which is in group 2 right now, you want to hit the exact same things. So all the rotations, even though I'm not using any rotations right now, and the position Z and the position X, Y. Okay, so then I'm going to hit 2 on my keyboard. I'm going to hit U for keyframes and all these keyframes come up. So there's a lot of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of match up the keyframes of the B and the Y, like the position, sorry. So I'm just going to match these up as best as I can. Uh, so yeah, it looks pretty sweet if you get it perfectly. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. I'm just going to give it a nice little rotation so it's off balance a bit. And I'm going to put it a bit higher. And now, yeah, it looks pretty cool because that's bigger than that one. And yeah, um, now I'm just going give to give this a little rotation. Okay, so then I'm just going to hit keyframes on everything so it doesn't affect the other stuff. Now I'm going to go about halfway. So as you can tell, it just kind of like comes up. I'm going to go about halfway. And I'm just going to make the keyframes go crazy. So I'm just going to like make that spin like that or whatever. You really want to play with the rotation, not so much the position. Actually, no, don't play with the position at all. Just play with rotation, because that's going to what makes the thing go creative and all cray cray, man. So then I'm just going to keyframe this so it isn't affected, because sometimes it affects it accidentally. So now if we just scroll through this, when it comes in, the Y goes crazy. You don't need to put that much spins, but I did anyways. So yeah, the Y goes there, and then yeah. So now I'm going to drag all these keyframes. I'm going to right click keyframe assistant and then easy ease and you gotta make sure you right click on the keyframe or it won't work and there we go so that's the bitch buy part and now I'm gonna do the last part so this part you have to make another solid so I'm just gonna call this element for name